Hi students, welcome to Easy Elimu Learning Simplified. My name is Mbide and in today's session, we are going to learn all about poetry. We are going to define a poem. We are going to have a look at a sample of a poem. We are also going to go through the features of a poem or what to expect when you see a poem, what to look out for when you see a poem. And we are also going to have a look at some tips on how to write a good poem. So before we proceed, we can recite that poem. Asan and Hassan have a son. A dear son do Hassan and Asan have. They feel their son shines like the sun. So it is just a short poem. Uh, that will guide us now uh, through this session. If someone stopped you today and asked you to define a poem, what is a poem? What would you say? We can define a poem as a composition in verse. A poem is written in lines. They could be short lines. They could be long lines. And then these lines are put together to form what we call a stanza. So these verses are called stanzas. And a person who writes poems or a person who composes a poem is called a poet. So we can have a look at some physical features of, of a poem. When you look at a poem, what do you see? And the most dominant feature that you see when you first look at a poem is that it is written in lines and these lines are grouped together to form stanzas so it is written in stanzas you can have a poem that only has one stanza some have two some have seven just depends on the length of the poem so a poem is not written like a novel or like a comprehension no it is written in in a, in form of stanzas and those stanzas can be as many as possible they can be as little as one stanza when you recite a poem when you go through a poem you can tell who is speaking you can tell who what this poem is talking about and who is speaking in this uh, poem and so the voice what you call the voice of the poem is called the persona that is the person that is speaking in the poem for example in the poem that we just read it was talking about the son of Hassan and Hassan so you can say the persona of that poem is someone very well known to Hassan and Hassan so the persona is the voice of the poem the voice that speaks in the poem that is what we call a persona when you read a poem when you recite a poem uh, you can tell that it's almost like a song there's a form of musicality there's a way in which it is flowing we call that rhythm the way it is flowing and so to achieve this rhythm to achieve this musicality we can do that by repetition you can see you will see that some poems have some form of repetition maybe the last line is repeated everywhere maybe there are some specific words that are repeated some specific lines that are repeated throughout the poem and rhythm can also be achieved by rhyme uh, when you read a poem and then you realize that some of the words their pronunciation is similar. The words may not be the same, but the pronunciation is the same, and especially the last words of each line. Maybe the last word of the last line of every stanza is similar, or the, all the words in all the lines have a similar rhyme. We call that the rhyme scheme. That is how we identify the rhyme scheme by looking at the pronunciation of the last words in each uh, in each line 
And so through rhyme and repetition, we are able to achieve this musicality of uh, the poems. Now, when you're reading a poem, you also realize that poems talk about something. It could be talking about a political topic, a, politi a politician. It could be talking about social things like maybe the state of our environment. Maybe you're writing a poem to someone who, maybe somebody is traveling and you decide to write them um, a poem and present it during their farewell party. Maybe you write for someone a poem uh, to celebrate their birthday with them. So poems address different things. They could be, they could range from anything social to political. Maybe you just notice something in your school and decide to uh, write a poem about it. So as you're reading a poem, it is important to pick out the theme of the poem. What is the main thing that this poem is trying to address, that this poem is telling us. And lastly, poems also use figurative language like metaphors, similes, symbolism. These are things that you're going to learn um, in form two, what similes are, what metaphors are. They are used to make the poem more enjoyable to read or recite. And it is also important to note that there's something called poetic license. And this is where uh, you may read a poem and realize maybe some sentences or some lines, because you have said they're lines. Some lines are written in something we may call not grammatically correct. For example, a line starting with a conjunction like and or because or maybe the order of adjectives is not as we have learned. That is poetic license. It's where a poet is allowed to break some grammatical rules to suit their poem so that the poem is more enjoyable and more fun to read or for it to emphasize on whatever. Uh, message it is that the poem is trying to pass. If you're given an assignment, you're given a task to write a poem or just want to attempt to write a poem, there are some tips you may consider. There are some things you may consider for you to write a, a good poem. Number one, identify a topic or a subject that appeals to you. Maybe you think that your classmates litter a lot around the school and it is fascinating to you so you decide to write a poem about it. Maybe you're celebrating somebody's birthday and this person is very special to you so you write a poem to celebrate them. So identify something that appeals to you. Let the theme of your poem be something that appeals to you that you like or sometimes even dislike, maybe you're trying to address it so that it can stop. You can, uh -huh, after that, list the unique features of the subject you have chosen. So this is before you start writing your poem, list down the unique features. If you're writing a poem to celebrate, say your brother or your sister for their birthday, you can write down things about them, unique things about them, things that you like, about them, uh, you can have a list of that. Plan your poem structure, for example, how many stanzas will your poem have? How many stanzas do you want your poem to have? Could be one stanza, could be three, four, however you want. And also make sure to use figurative language like similes and metaphors. This will enable you uh, enable your poem to be more enjoyable um, to your audience and also know your target audience. Who are you writing this poem for? Is it for your schoolmates? Is it for a parent, um, a friend, your relatives? Know your target audience so that you can know what kind of language you're going to use because you can, for example, not use Sheng with the older generation. They won't understand, but you can use it with your age mates. 
So those are some of the tips to consider uh, before you write a poem. And you can actually attempt to write a poem and put uh, use those tips, have them in mind uh, before you start writing the poem. And that's it for this session. I hope you're now able to identify the unique features that distinguish poems from other uh, forms of writing. And for further practice, you can have a look at the quiz and attempt it. Imagine that your sister has gotten a scholarship to study at Harvard University. Write a one stanza poem celebrating her. One stanza poem celebrating her. If you're writing about your sister, maybe write down some things you like about her then, then proceed from there, congratulate her, celebrate her. Thank you for tuning in and see you in the next class.